Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today is Chris Rosini, our co-host. Chris, good to have you with us. It is great to be with you, Dr. Paul. Good. I am sure we're going to talk about very important things, subjects we have visited with before, but we like to touch on the economic things, and there's you can't separate everything. We have we have this medical problem that the government created, and then we have the lockdown that has a lot to do with economics and and politics. And uh, right now, uh, there's uh, a lot of confusion about civil liberties, certainly about what the government is going to do to us, what the mandates are going to be. Do we wear masks today or tomorrow? What happens next week? But the one the big, in the bigger picture, something you and I have talked about uh, in the past, and that is uh, when, when uh, you get too much uh, cooperation between business and government, and there's all degrees of it. Uh, sometimes you have these, the uh, socialists, to, total socialists or Marxists, they own everything, all property and everything goes on. And uh, it's a form of socialism because they control the price of things and they control the market. You control the price of things. It's uh, essentially control the whole market. So you have degrees, a little bit of help or a lot, a lot of help. Now, uh, the problem with what we have, it's interventionism. And it was designed during the Depression not to go to socialism because we just want a little bit of help. Sounds like a good idea, good old compromise. Let's have you know, get Democrats and Republicans to vote, vote for that. We'll just have to monitor it so that nobody takes advantage of the situation. So that's what we've had. We've had interventionism by government. And uh, I- interventionism is not socialism, although it's socialistic. It does go in and, you know, we're preaching uh, getting close to having socialized medicine, although we don't have it. The government's in charge of it more so all the time. I imagine 70% of the people get their medical care with dealing with the government. So it's a a continuous thing. So you have it, but the big problem with uh, interventionism, it gives the great incentive for companies that have money to influence government. And I uh, take take for instance, uh, Chris, the uh, military industrial complex. You know that's the easiest budget to pass, even under today's circumstances with uh, the Republican and Democrats fighting. They always nobody cuts the military budget because they're protecting our liberty. They're protecting our constitution. That's why we were in, in the Middle East. So we they never never challenge it. They come together. Guess what they do? They, they build weapons in every state. Every state member of Congress or senators are under some pressure, uh, you know, to keep their jobs. It's all designed. It's deliberate. So it starts like that a little bit at a time, and then it expands. I would say, Chris, that we're at a point where it has expanded tremendously in every day. And I think the lockdown has demonstrated that it's, that it's getting worse. And the, the one fear we have and should have is that when you have interventionism and we know that uh, uh, corporatism develops and the corporations get the power and they usually get exempt you know, from any liability like the pharmaceuticals do with the, uh, with the vaccines right now. So they have a lot of control, although they're not owned. They're not owned by the corporations. And uh, yet they have a lot of control. Most of the time they get benefits like monopoly. So whether it's a monopoly of government or a monopoly uh, by, by the corporations getting power from the government. So in some ways, with a little bit of free market economics and interventionism, it becomes a wealthier society. In a way, that's a negative because they say, oh, see, it's working for a while. It always works for a while because governments spend too much money, they run up too much debt, they destroy the money, and that's what we are. And that means the government has to get more involved with the corporations and the banking system. So when we have trouble, 
Can you imagine it? They bail out these companies. <laughs> Just look at these, these past year. Every time there's a downturn, which was created by government, then we have to bail out more. So the corporations have to be good partners, you know, with the government, build those weapons, do what they want. And now I would think what we're ta- looking at right now, uh, Chris, that we have to be concerned about is this partnership has led the uh, the corporations, especially social media, to be a partner in government to have the power to carry out their social policy. Now, that is dangerous. That is a real threat to our liberties. And I think that's where the frustration comes right now. And if we don't have our way and get people to reverse this trend, you know, this uh, corporatism uh, will then get into become back fascism. And I think we're getting very close to that. And that uh, that is when they need more and more power to enforce the laws. And right now they have way too much power, but the people have to understand this whole system or they will say, well, I get checks from the government every month. And, and the business people, unfortunately, it took me a long time to really, really understand and being in Washington helped me understand that coalition of big business and big government. And that should be a threat to all Americans. That's right, Dr. Paul. And you know, what really caught our attention is um, a few days ago, a judge gave an opinion that it was constitutional for corporations to mandate vaccines for their employees, which is just astonishing. And wouldn't you know, the next day we start seeing in the news, Google, uh, Netflix, um, there, was, there was another big company that, uh, Facebook, was mandating that their employees have to be vaccinated to come back. I mean, what a terrible situation to put their employees in. And we'll talk more about that. But you know, this system that we're in, this government corporate system, you don't know where government begins and corporations end and they're all just mixed up together and there's no separation between the two. They're staffed by the same people that go back and forth between government and the corporations, they get rich. And you know the big appeal with this is money because, and we're seeing it with these vaccines, mandated profits. I mean, is there any easier way to make money to get rich than having the government, you know, force people to use your product. You don't have to sell customers. You don't have to advertise. You don't have to even care about customers. They have to take your stuff and they're getting rich beyond belief. And this is like Dr. Paul said, the military industrial complex has been doing it for decades. This is just now hitting closer to home. Um, So what we need is the exact opposite. This is nothing like free markets which is a separation of government and business. That's what the word free means, free of government interference. You know, government has a role if a company or people, if they use force against you or they defraud you or they break a contract, well, then government settles that. That's the role of government. It is totally backwards today. And people amazingly are bamboozled into being afraid of free markets. And here we are, it's a terrible situation. Chris, you're absolutely right. These corporations, we need to examine this very carefully because it's very dangerous the direction that we're going in because we have interventionism, which is permissible under our current understanding, but it's very dangerous because interventionism says the government can intervene for the benefit of certain companies. And the temptation is so great that they are able to get control of the Congress and uh, co- government and influence the lobbyists, and they become much more powerful. And I think that's what we're witnessing uh, right now. But the big problem also is the fact that people who uh, get involved in this, say in the military industrial complex or the medical industrial complex, what they do is they go back and forth. They work for the government. They know the rules and the rate and the operation, then they go back and get a job in the private industry. In the military, you have the generals who who become uh, experts uh, on foreign policy and their foreign policies. How do we get the budget passed? And Republicans and Democrats all are voting for the military budget because of this situation. So they're they're, uh, military officers, Americans like the military. I've been in the military and they think the military 
uh, and the, the wars we fight is, are all constitutional and they protect our liberties, which is not true. They're a problem too, as they are fought without the declaration of war. And uh, they're very much influenced by the military industrial complex. So then, then when they leave uh, a, uh, a, a government position, then they finally get a job as the military advisors get on television. But that's true in medicine, too. Just look at what Scott Gottlieb just did. You know, he used to be uh, uh, on the commission of the uh, FDA. And uh, we heard about him all the time. But just recently, uh, wasn't too long, he got out of the FDA. And now he has a, uh, a very, very nice job at Pfizer. So here he is. He's been writing all these regulations. And Pfizer is always looking to how do we get us? We have to have three shots instead of two shots. And uh, so, so the uh, pe people that are regulating out are the people who have most special interest. And that's what always bothered me about regulators. People say, you can't have free markets. They're too vicious. We have to have regulators to take care of the people. So they have them come in and... Uh, and, and guess what? The banking regulators come in and they write the regulation. The medical uh, industrial complex, they come in and write those regulations in the payment system. So the wrong people are writing the regulation. That's why people should look more carefully at the free market because you do have regulation. You don't get benefits. You don't get exemption from liability. You don't get bonuses and you don't get special privileges and uh, bailouts uh, eternally. Sure, they throw crumbs to a few poor people and that keeps them a little quieter, but it ends because the governments under these circumstances uh, go broke. And we're on the verge of that. We're in the middle of it. And that's why people are so unhappy. So we have to think more seriously about the big picture and decide whether we want more government or what, whether or not we will uh, understand that our constitution provides uh, facilities to have a free market economy. And the purpose of the government then is to protect our liberties and our properties. Excellent, Dr. Paul. And you know, in this non-free market system of ours, uh, where government is married to politically connected big corporations, interesting things start to happen. Individuals in our society are no longer customers that you serve, but they become people that you try to control in this system. And also uh, small businesses, those who are not in the club, not politically connected, they're, they're a nuisance too. They, you try to abolish them. You know, um, Look at subsidies, bailouts, all the laws that cripple competition. Those are all for the politically connected big uh, companies. So uh, small businesses have to, their primary concern is taking care of those customers because that's their lifeline in order to receive more money. They don't have tax access to taxpayer money. And think about last year's lockdowns. Who got hammered? It was the small businesses, the big retailers, big Amazons. They all, they made record money. On the, on the same virus. So, uh, you know, and I, I want to make a, another point because uh, another economic hit could come if small businesses do not speak out against vaccine passports because that will hit you hard as well. Every small business should be against it because you're going to be turned into the vaccine police for the government. You're going to have to pay attention to who took a needle and who didn't, and you're going to have to turn away sales because somebody didn't get a vaccine for a d disease with a 99.7% uh, 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 survival rate, it will be total headaches all the time that you will have to deal with if you don't speak out against uh, vaccine passports. And if you think it's hard enough to succeed in business, and most businesses fail, if you think it's hard to succeed now, you know, adding a layer of vaccine passports will only make things harder. You know, the um, system we have today is called economic interventionism. It is supposed to be a token amount of economic planning, central economic planning, but not too much, not socialism. We don't want socialism. This was devised in the 1930s when fascism was uh, running rampant around the world causing World War II. And uh, so... We, we were in charge. We had a lot of wealth and we were able to do this, but we needed economic planning. Uh, 
thinking that we could do it forever because we were so wealthy. But we consume wealth every year more each time uh, through the welfare warfare state. And, and now we're at a point of, of, uh, of, back, uh, of bankruptcy. But the economic planning always demands more and more economic planning because it doesn't work so well. And, uh, and, and if you continue to do this, you know, the economic planning, which might be minor and just superficial, it goes into a point where somebody has to get control. And it's not the people. It's the, it's the bureaucrats, it's the politicians, it's the uh, people who uh, benefit, the lobbyists, the big businesses, they end up with the control. And that is what has happened. There's a lot of control by, by these individuals. And now it isn't just a little economic planning. What we have now is uh, corporatism. The corporations are big. And we know that social media now is very, very powerful. We know the military industrial complex is very, very powerful. The medical industrial complex is very, very powerful. Just look at uh, the vaccine companies now. They're exempt from li uh, liability. At the same time, uh, they get all these contracts. If things aren't going well at the, current, at the present time, they're deciding, well, <clears throat> you know, given two shots from Pfizer vaccine doesn't seem to be as good as we thought. So I guess we have to go to three. You get more and more of the same thing. Of course, they shouldn't be in the vaccine business and we shouldn't be in the military industrial complex business either. What we should be doing is thinking more clearly about protecting the liberties of people and putting the pressure on the people to take care of themselves because we have morphed into a system where we believe the government has the absolute responsibility to protect us, make us safe and secure socially safe and economically safe and secure all, all around. And they can't do it without taking away our liberties. And now we're in a conflict because we're running out of money. I will finish up <clears throat> by closing by uh, saying, you know, it's very tough reading the news these days because people are being put in terrible positions. They're, they're going to have to choose between their health going forward and their job. I mean, how terrible of decision is that? Uh, you know, with employers mandating vaccines for a disease with a 99.7% survival rate, I mean, that 0.3%, you have a natural right to take that risk yourself. This is your life. And if your employer does this to you, it tells you a lot about what your employer thinks of you. And hopefully you'll think a little higher of yourself than they do. You know, um, we only have this one life and we have to make these tough decisions. And the thing is these companies and the governments, they've protected themselves. If something happens to you or to your loved ones, there is the, no recourse anywhere. And, and everybody knows this and that's what's scary about it. And you could also, if you're facing with your job you could move on to another job someday or three jobs from now. You know, this too shall pass. 2020, 2021 will be in the past someday. And, but the decisions that we make can last. That vaccine, once it's in, it's not coming out. So we feel for everyone, the people we know, and the best we can do is say, look at the big picture, think it through and do the best that you think for your life. Oh, very, very good, Chris. And I'm going to close by talking a little bit more about this uh, uh, fascism that is likely to come, and we're on the verge of it, coming from the fact that we had economic interventionism and corporatism, and now we are have, having dependency on this system. We depend on uh, the printing press machine. Deficits don't matter run up the debt, and we're going to be okay forever. But that's those days are coming to an end because uh, we've run out of steam. Now, in this last year or two, we've had this uh, a new influx of a problem, and that is the lockdowns, along with a contrived uh, uh, fear-mongering campaign over a virus. Not that it wasn't serious, but it wasn't like they described it. It was an excuse to expand this corporate state. And uh, 
The, the, the other thing that he's given an opportunity for are the culture of Marxists. Marxism was on the march because uh, if, if uh, things are disruptive, we have Marxists now in the, in the U.S. Congress, and they say, see what freedom does to you? Look at what's happening which is an absolute lie because it isn't freedom that's caused the problem. It's the lack of freedom, spending too much money, Federal Reserve printing press money, taking care of all the special interests, the corporate corporations who remain in charge. And the situation is ripe for the big corporations and government to come together like this and the other people just suffering the consequences. Now, one example of this that I like to use to show how it works is um, there are a lot of rich people. I used to wonder why, why do these rich business people like you know, socialism and fascism and Marxism and its power and solidifying the, the uh, economic control of the country is by having a system which, which they have total control of. But uh, just this weekend, I read where George Soros uh, gave him $1 million uh, to an organization, Black Lives Matter, and uh, and they're promoting. Uh, the, the, mainly, it was designed to promote, uh, you, you know, the uh, the whole the whole idea of getting rid of the police. <laughs> you know, defund the police, pay all this money that he earns in, in, in a society that is designed for him to make a lot of money to take the money, and get rid of the police, and uh, well, guess what happens? In the cities that go along with this, they're up in flames. People are killing each other, and a lot of them. And it's all done in the name of, you know, generosity and freedom and equity and socialism and all that. So here he is, a, a businessman making billions of dollars. This $1 million is nothing for him, but the effort of what he's doing, giving this money to people who want to aggravate the situation. Because the goal of the culture of Marxists is to create chaos in the streets. And when it gets worse, and they're right now using it to blame freedom, freedom lovers for all this. Just look at the exaggeration and distortion of what they did with uh, January 6th, that, that the people who wanted freedom did this. And right now, it's the people, it, it never the police, uh, uh, you, you, you know, uh, it's always the police that, get blamed and right now this black lives matter is is close friends with the culture of marxists and this is what they want chaos it's the whole mess whether it's the lockdown for the virus or promoting the uh, black lives matter it's all designed for chaos because that gives a, a room for the marxists to move in but guess right i don't believe they're going to win because it's so bad and so stupid, it's going to get worse. And a lot of people are waking up. People are waking up now and say, what's this junk are you talking about? Well, the vaccine isn't working, so we'll give two doses. Oh, that doesn't work. We'll give them three doses. And then they say, well, Fauci. He said, well, if one mask is good, he's on again, off a day. One day, mask, none. the next day, is no mask. But early on, it was, it was saying one mask. He says, well, it doesn't seem to be working. It seems to be uh, breaking through. Of course, masks don't do any good at all. So then he said, put two masks on. And if necessary, put three masks on. It never stops. And that's all they know about. is government doesn't work. And the only answer you ever hear is get more government. Well, I would say get less government, let the people assume responsibility for themselves, and maybe we will move in the direction that the founders hoped we would have moved. And that is be self-reliant, take care of ourselves, and be responsible, and be able to defend ourselves, defend ourselves by providing for ourselves and our family, and also the willingness to defend ourselves if we have to, and that's why they gave us the Second Amendment. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.